So basically the video that I've been working on for the past week or so, which I've put some of the most cool and what I think are fascinating animations into, has just been obviously taking a shit ton more time than I thought it would. Anyway, I'm going to do things a little bit different in this video. I'm gonna start things off by reading you a question that one of my viewers has sent me. This is the answer to a question that I get asked all the damn time, and I'm hoping that by finally answering this just formally for everyone to hear, uh, I'm gonna stop getting this question, and also I'm hoping that it helps you guys finally get the answer that you might or might not want to hear or be looking for. Now, before I get into my story, as with pretty much every video like this, I do have to make it clear that I'm making these videos to help keep people safe. I'm not making this to promote psychedelic use or any drug use for that matter. I'm simply trying to help people who have had some traumatic experiences. According to YouTube's own community guidelines shown here, videos which intend to educate but do not glorify substance use are generally suitable for advertising. The following video does not glorify the use of drugs, is also not graphic since it does not show the consumption of any illegal substances. The following video is strictly educational. Oh, and if you enjoyed the trippy visual effects during the intro, head on over to our Patreon page and show your support. These were just basic effects done by me, but when we hit the next goal on Patreon and I hire an actual animator, these effects are going to get way better. I really doubt you're going to respond to this since you most likely get a lot of these, but I would really appreciate some advice on a bad trip I had on Salvia. So I've done it twice in my life. The first one wasn't the bad one. If anything, I couldn't remember much of it. The second time, though, is where it got bad. I'm sure you've had much worse. I don't know, it's all subjective, right? But essentially, I took the hit and held it in. It was 20x purple sticky Salvia. Didn't feel much, so I took another. And as I was exhaling, my face started to go numb, and the memories of the last trip rushed through my head, and I remember thinking, oh no. And that was my last moment fully conscious. I was trying to meditate, so my eyes were closed, but when I opened them, all I could see were my hands and a repeated image of them just shooting endlessly down a void. That actually sounds really familiar. Same thing happened to me when I tried salvia and I was smoking a cigarette and it looked like my hand was just stretching through this infinite void of like mirrors reflecting off each other for I was gonna say infinity, but then I said infinity twice. At that point, I just completely blanked out. I essentially experienced full-blown ego death. I didn't know who I was, where I was, what I was doing, what reality was. My mind was the equivalent of a baby's. Eventually, the world returned, and it was no longer black, but everything was moving and shifting, and I didn't understand anything. I can barely remember any of this clearly, except for hearing a voice. Maybe it was a female's voice, calling me deeper into the void. Come, find Once I regained the ability to think again, I put myself back together, both mentally and physically, and sprung up and threw the salvia away right in the trash. Except, I was still kind of tripping at this point. I then started to furiously clean my entire house to try to get my mind off it, but I still had this sinking feeling that this salvia was trying to pull me back into the void. Come to the void, me to be here. Give me your hand! I am having a lot of trouble overcoming the trauma this experience has caused me, um, but I am hoping to turn it into a good experience. I just don't know how to do that or if it's even possible to see this in a good way. The only thing I feel like I learned was just how psychologically weak our consciousness really is. If there's anything you can do to help me, I would greatly appreciate a response. Well, hmm, my response to that overly dramatic acted out story. <laughs> now, what I think will help the most is if you understand what causes these experiences to happen. And I mean on a very simple, just fundamental, physical level. Even though this is still just what we can currently observe to happen, I do believe that this will greatly help you in overcoming the experience and learning from it. And it'll also help anyone watching who's had a bad trip on not just salvia, but on any psychedelic, because the same fundamental rules apply here. Using our newly revamped understanding of how psychedelics affect the brain, even though we really don't know that much yet, can dramatically help to demystify these experiences by simplifying them into an easy to digest format. This has been the single most important factor in my own recovery after I experienced severely traumatic trips. What I've also found is that the reason why some people experience long-lasting trauma after bad trips 
is because they put way too much weight on what they believed the psychedelic experience was or was not trying to show them. When the truth is, sometimes it's just as simple as you had a shitty set and setting, man. When you take any psychedelic, it doesn't have to be salvia, which is considered an atypical psychedelic, or DMT. It doesn't matter what kind of psychedelic you're taking. They're all going to cause your brain to change the way that it interprets uh, data, such as sensory input. For example, with LSD, regions of the brain that don't normally communicate very much with each other will begin to communicate more, and we've seen this in fMRI scans. For example, the visual cortex will start having, you know, some pretty deep chats with the area of the brain that's responsible for converting the vibration of whatever this is into sound so that we can hear stuff to the degree where all of a sudden it feels like you can see sound. Then once your visual cortex is done having that conversation, it might go have a long chat and start communicating more with the area that's responsible for, I don't know, smelling shit and tasting taste to the point where it feels like you can taste colors. Imagine feeling like you could hear sight. Like, I can't even wrap my brain around hearing sight. That just sounds totally crazy. Hmm, I wonder what sound would smell like. Now, of course, when this kind of a dramatic change happens, a lot of people are going to feel a degree of shock and just surprise and even fear. And this is largely because we tie who we are, like our essence as a human, our ego, is tied directly with the functionality of our brain. Who we are is a collection of memories, thoughts, feelings, and all of these have to do with us relating the current moment to experiences that happened in the past. But all of a sudden, when the way our brains are functioning, no longer relates to any memories we have because you can't even think what a psychedelic trip is like with your thoughts because your brain has to be in that composition to comprehend things in that altered way. So you've got really no data to go off. It can be very confusing because your sense of self is at that moment, it's literally dead. You are gone. If who you are, if your ego is nothing more than a collection of thoughts, memories, and feelings, as soon as that brain changes, you are physiologically not you anymore. It's not just like this metaphysical thing like, oh, ego death, yes, you died. No, no, you actually die. If our brain were to function in just a slightly different way, such as when it's on a psychedelic, we are going to perceive what we call consciousness or just this reality in such a different way. Now, I'm not saying that consciousness doesn't exist outside of this brain. That's an argument I don't want to get into. I'm simply saying that we can obviously see that we need our brains to function function in a specific way in order to be who we are, in order to see this reality the way that we're used to seeing it. We can also look at people with brain diseases such as dementia or Alzheimer's. They are hardly ever the same person they used to be. I don't want to get any deeper than this. I'm sure we could spiritually go way off and I'm not saying what I believe or don't believe here, but if I change your brain, I'm going to change you. You cannot argue that. When you take these drugs, your brain changes. I know I'm repeating myself. I just want to make this clear so you guys really understand that. So you're not you. Of course you're going to be freaked out when you smoke salvia and you feel like you're dying. Especially if you relate your sense of self to your thoughts, memories, and feelings. And now we're getting deep. You can definitely feel like you're a lot more than just this body and this brain. And what causes the bad trip, and this is where it gets interesting, it's because you're trying to hold on to those memories. You're trying to hold on to the familiar sense of self that you once knew. And of course it's going to be terrifying because this drug is in your brain systematically changing things and eradicating any idea of who you once thought you were because you can't even access those memories in the same way anymore. If you are just the way that your brain works and if you can get a disease and your brain can change and you can become totally brain di or a different person, I kicked my mic, then when these drugs kick in, you literally don't exist in the same way anymore until the drugs run their course and they leave the brain and your mind slowly starts acting like it used to act. You start to regain functions that you temporarily lost because your brain decided to go, I don't know, on some trip somewhere, follow this instruction manual on how to build a new mind to come up with some interesting solutions to complex problems that you couldn't see from the perspectives that you now have access to because you can't have access to these perspectives unless your brain's in a different formation. You get it? So yes, holding on is obviously the kicker here. If you just let go during that experience, meaning decided before you smoked it, or acknowledged and accepted beforehand that yes, this experience is going to physiologically kill me in a sense. It's going to kill my sense of self. There's obviously different thresholds and different levels. You don't have to always smoke enough salvia to be completely gone. You don't have to smoke enough DMT to blast off. You can vary the degree, like you can vary your dose, and depending on the dose, it's going to allow you to retain some of your brain's normal functionality. Obviously, the more of the drug that's in your mind, the more your mind is altered, chemically speaking, and the more it's going to behave differently, and the more your brain behaves differently, 
the more you feel like you are gone and not you. Now, of course, some people can take very high doses and they always seem to be calm and they never really lose it. And this is largely because these people are simply put just not choosing to panic. They may not even feel anxiety that things are changing. These people might be excited. They might be welcoming of the change. It's like, oh my God, I'm forgetting that person I used to be. And now, oh, I'm still in this body. Like this is still me, but I'm experiencing just such a, wow, vastly different world and a different way of, understanding reality and it can be so exciting it can feel like you're in a different goddamn dimension but you got to let go of your sense of self before you smoke it you can't take a drug and think that you're still gonna hold on and this is what some people do they try to take smaller doses and I'm guilty of this in the past because they want to retain some sense of self because they're afraid of fully letting go you're setting yourself up for a nightmare do not trip and first of all I'm not suggesting that anyone does trip but if you are going to trip if you're gonna take that risk Besides just testing your drugs and being safe that way, you have to have a contingency plan in place in case shit just hits the fan and then sprays everywhere. You can't control these experiences. And when you do try to control them, like just by taking a little bit, it often turns out very terrifying because you get so anxious that you work yourself into a paranoid panic. Before you're gonna take any drug, you need to be prepared. And part of being prepared for the psychedelic experience is accepting that you're not gonna be you and you have to be okay with that. Be okay losing your sense of self. I mean, when you're sober, you can tell yourself that it's fine, you'll come back. Uh, the issue is when you're in that state, you can't remind yourself that you're on a drug. A lot of people would just say, oh, if you're having a bad trip, just remind yourself it'll end. Your ego self, the one that, you know, you perceive to be this big tough dude who can handle the psychedelics. Yeah, man, give me 20 tabs, 20 tabs. I'll take all those 20 tabs, man. That guy's gone. That bird chirping outside, you can taste those chirps. That's not you, you can't taste chirps. And since you're not you, you can't just tell yourself it'll end. You'll be like, what's a drug? I don't even know what a drug is. What, end? What's end? What is time? Oh my God, time? I'm moving through time, but this is infinite. Your perception of everything just takes this big ass 180 spin and you just get warped to the degree where, man, you don't even know which way up is. Not to sound too much like a hippie bro dude, man, but don't take these drugs unless you're just ready for the ride. And sometimes this ride takes you right to hell's doorstep and you gotta ring the bell and walk on in. There's no choice. Believe you me, you will get burned. You will. You might even end up getting completely engulfed in flames to the point where it burns and singes all your hair off and you're bald. Like that shit happens, man. You gotta be ready for it. I mean, of course you can never fully be ready for these hellish experiences, but you gotta be as prepared as you can be. And part of that is just knowing that when you take these drugs, demons from your past, can come out. There's trauma that you could have had as a child that you have just fully blocked off and there's a doorway that you can't open until you take the psychedelic and it realizes that it doesn't have to open that door to face that trauma because it's all been an illusion this entire time and there's actually nothing hiding in that door. The trauma's already out, baby. You're just pretending it's not there and you've tried to put it in this little corner uh, to contain it, but it's actually grown roots and it has now infected your entire neural net to the point where you got a virus, baby, and the psychedelic says, oh my God, virus detected. We are not functioning optimally. We could be living so much better. We must help delete this virus. And how do you delete a virus unless you know that it's there? The psychedelics are like your, <laughs> your virus software. It's detected malware. It's like, oh my God, pop-up detected. We must disable ads, block all pop-ups. Let's get this system running great. Let's uh, get rid of these Trojan horses and let's get this guy his life back. And sometimes you can be in this very dark, deep pit in your life and super negative and the psychedelic comes in and it just makes shit worse. Takes you down a deeper, darker path. But hey, if you manage to survive that, then you're freaking golden. If not just for the simple fact that you realized you could literally make it through hell and survive once you feel like you've spent an eternity being tortured and cut up in little pieces and died every which way possible. And to you, that experience was totally real. Man, all right, bring on reality. Let's see what it's got. Not sure if it compares to dying infinite deaths. Anyway, I've completely gone off the beaten path or the topic that I was trying to focus on here and went down some crazy ass rants. The entire point that I'm trying to make with this video is simply put, bad trips happen because you are trying to hold on to a sense of self which physiologically isn't even there anymore. Even if you're there a little bit, um, you're still not totally you because you are your 
brain. Change the brain, change you. I'm not trying to get you guys to change your beliefs. I'm not trying to get you to believe that consciousness doesn't exist outside of the brain or that the brain generates the consciousness. All that I'm trying to get you to understand is the very simple fact that if you take a drug that alters the way you think, you're gonna be thinking differently. And as soon as you really understand that, like totally grasp it, and it sounds so simple, but so many people just can't get this. All of a sudden the psychedelic experience, it's not as scary. And all of your past experiences that may have baffled you just start making so much more sense because you go, well, no shit, I was afraid. I was trying to hold on to who I was. I didn't know I was gonna die. And of course I couldn't hold on. My brain was changing. It was impossible to hold on. I, I didn't fail by holding on to who I was. I just had a drug in my brain. I couldn't think the drug out of my brain. It had to run its course. So there's nothing to be upset about. You get scared, so you have a bad trip. You gotta be held down by your friends. As soon as you understand the reason for a specific problem, like understanding why these bad trips happen. Of course, there's other reasons, but this is probably the biggest reason why they happen. And this ties in with not being prepared and this and that. And you know, there's a whole list of uh, factors involved. But once you understand this, oh, it, it's really liberating. It is so freeing to just be able to let go of a lot of this bullshit. And this has greatly helped me getting over my own bad trips. I mean, there's other factors involved too with getting over a bad trip. One is just the embarrassment factor because I had the worst trip of my life um, where my friends had to hold me down because they thought I was gonna run out of the house and run into traffic. And of course I took my clothes off because when you're tripping, you don't know what clothes are. We're so used to clothes, we don't realize how weird they feel. Plus when you're on a psychedelic and your skin feels different, stuff that's always touching them can be claustrophobic. Like you wanna get it off. So, you know, it's embarrassing. I was naked, friends are holding me down. Apparently I was holding my penis and punching it. Like. I thought my penis was against me. Like my entire body was trying to eat me. My dick was probably like the snake monster, grew teeth and it was trying to like devour my legs. Who the hell knows, right? That's embarrassing. How do you, how do you face those friends? Like, hey, you guys were on top of me for hours while I was naked punching my penis. As soon as you can get over just those embarrassing moments, it's like, first of all, who the fuck cares? Like whatever, I was tripping. You don't need to maintain composure when you're taking something that literally takes you out of this societal system that your brain is normally taught to behave in. Of course you're gonna be weird and you should have a mutual understanding of that with your friends first. There's no reason to be embarrassed about punching your penis, okay? So just knock that one out of the park right there. The next step is accepting that you just survived a traumatic experience. I mean, if you're telling me about the problem, if you feel like there's a problem, that's good, you survived it. Next, what you can do is decide to probably never trip again if you don't ever wanna face that again because you can bet your bottom dollar that if you take psychedelics, there is the chance that they are going to destroy your ego. So if you're not ready or willing for that experience to happen, don't take psychedelics, it's that simple. Don't take them because you wanna just see pretty colors and watch the world dance around as it transforms and objects turn into other objects like, Stupid, totally wrong reason to take these drugs to begin with. They're tools primarily to help us grow and to learn from our mistakes and become better people. Um, but besides that, just don't trip. Because if you can't handle the ego death, don't trip. It's that simple. And there's no shame in that. One person isn't tougher than the other person because they're okay with losing their sense of self. I mean, there's a lot of people who don't like themselves. Of course they'd be okay with losing their ego or losing their memories. Uh, that can be an escape, but psychedelics are interesting because they're not usually an escape. I don't wanna say that. They usually make you, like I said, face who you really are. For some, it actually is a bit of an escape. I mean, these drugs affect different people in different ways. And when they forget you know, who they are, they also forget their problems with it. So that can be very liberating and fun for them, right? Different strokes for different folks, right? But what I have found has helped me is just truly understanding what is causing the ego death. I mean, now it's so simple to me. What I feel like we do as humans is just complicate things and we make these problems so much bigger and scarier than they really have to be. And by understanding like one of the causes of this ego death, it just really simplifies it in such a way that just lets you let go of holding on to that fear. But anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, hit me up with that, hit me up, hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for more psychedelic content. But anyway, the next video I have coming out is arguably one of my most favorite videos. I don't know when it's gonna be done because I do keep raising the level of 
awesomeness, in my opinion. I mean, I don't want to speak too highly of myself. I don't want to have that big of an ego, but I am really enjoying making my content better. It's just fun for me. I'm a very creative person. When I was a kid, I used to love sculpting and just anything with my hands, and I was very artistic. And doing these drug education videos, uh, it can definitely get a bit bland. So now that I've started to actually just get creative with this stuff and just apply myself fully to it, I'm having tons of fun. And that's good. Like if I want to do YouTube, if I want to be this drug educator guy uh, as my job, it needs to be fun. If it's not fun, I'm not gonna make good content. I'm not gonna last. But anyway, the video that's coming is animations done by me. I still haven't hired my animation guy that I keep talking about because what happens is at the end of every month you always lose a bunch of patrons. I mean it's just natural right? Some people can't afford to be supporting you anymore and it's insane that people even support me to begin with. So I'm not saying this like oh no I'm losing patrons but what it means is at the end of every month we're just kind of a little bit further away from reaching that goal. Now we are still really close. We literally just have to hit $1,000 more in monthly pledges and then I can hire him. There's actually a couple people I want to hire. One of them is surprisingly enough someone that I've mentioned in videos. It's someone I used to trip with in New Zealand who happens to work as an animator and I just think it would be so incredibly amazing to give him a job. Like to get him on my team and to pay him monthly from the Patreon fund to animate these videos to make them way more kick-ass. To me that is just awesome. He also has found his calling in Peru. He wants to live there. He can't afford to leave his job to go live in Peru. So if I can pay him from my Patreon to quit his job, animate videos, and live in Peru and live his dream, th that would make me happy. When you see the animated video that I was able to put together, which isn't even that crazy, like at all, it's very simple stuff, and if you think that's gonna be cool, wait till you see what we've got in store with some of these um, simulation videos that are just gonna really take this channel to the next level. But anyway, if you wanna see that happen, check out our Patreon page. Lots of love going out to all you guys on Patreon. Lots of love going out to my subscribers. I am feeling so much love today and <laughs> I'm just gonna end this video. I will see you guys all in the next one. Cheers.